My name's Liam Stocker and I play for the Carlton Football Club. Uh, since I was 12, so six now, um, I started in under 12s at East Sandringham and then um, gradually moved up to play for the Sandy Dragons in under 18s and then finally, you know, here I am. 16s, it wasn't too, too strenuous for me. I sort of got away with being a bit unfit, um, but I was told or it was made pretty clear to me that I wasn't fit enough to, to get going with the big boys at Metro, so I was, unfortunately didn't make the Metro squad there and um, went into 17s with a chip on my shoulder. But um, the step up from 16s to 17s was massive. Um, I think TAC clubs now do a really good job of preparing kids to play AFL football, um, especially Sandringham. Um, I couldn't speak of them higher, but um, yeah, the step up was definitely huge. And then 17s to 18s, 17s is more a developmental year, so get your body right. Um, Make sure you know the game plan or roughly what the game plan is so that um, when you get into the next year, there's nothing really holding you back except your own performance. So that's sort of what I tried to control and went into my 18s pre-season thinking um, the only thing I really had to do was um, get fit. I knew the game plan, um, I was good enough, but yeah, getting fit was a big thing. But certainly the 16s to 17s, 17s to 18s, there's always a step up um, no matter what level of footy you're playing, but those were big ones, yeah. Nearing December in my under-15s year, I tore my TFL so badly, I was out for eight weeks um, and I struggled to walk for a little bit. And then um, 17s, I had a pretty good run. I had a little AC issue, which came back in my 18s year. And that hampered me for about 14 rounds of a 16 round season. Um, and then I missed the Metro Championships um, because I had my jaw snapped in half. But um, other than those ones, I've had a pretty smooth run, yeah. Um, I think my personal training was all about my body because I knew um, as a bigger body I'd be more, I was in more danger of soft tissue injuries than some of the other guys and because I wasn't as fit and my legs couldn't take as much I knew, I was well aware that um, I had to do a little bit more to get myself up so I often was more sore than the other boys and that often meant that I, like I invested in an ice bath um, in my 18s year which I'd recommend to anyone to do because it makes you feel instantly that much better um, and you can do it throughout the night and that's it's a bit extreme, but that's what I had to do sometimes to get up for games. So yeah, my, my 18s year was all about prep. So what I could do better, because I was a bigger body, I didn't need to go to the gym as much as some of the other boys, but I certainly needed to, to work more on my functional movement patterns and stuff like that, um, work more on my running, and, and that's sort of where the functional movement came into it. But yeah, rehab prep was almost more important than training itself, yeah. It's not as weight bearing is the one thing I noticed. So I was used to pushing, I was pushing close to 100 kilos on a bench when I first came to see you, and that was through the shoulder injury. Um, and all my goals through gym work were on how much I could press, how much I could pull, push, um, throw, um, in all of those respects. And then when I got here, um, I knew what, what I wanted to get out of um, my training. And I, I think with gym work, I felt very compressed. I felt like it, I was only moving in one plane and that it wasn't helping me as much as what it could and um, the feedback I'd gotten from Sandy and from, from basically everyone was that I wasn't fit enough and I didn't move well enough. Um, so I think because I came into this with a goal in mind after a couple of sessions when I realised that it's not all about pushing, pulling weights, um, it's sort of intertwining the two um, or even more, more movement patterns to, to get the best out of myself, I think that's that's the biggest thing I took away. It's very different, certainly, and it takes a couple of sessions to get used to, as I think any type of training will. Um, but once I was into it, you know, it sort of, it fits all shapes and sizes, whereas gym work, traditional gym work might not. Because um, I know of, of many guys who have, who have gone through gym work and haven't got the results I wanted. And then um, I think Miles is a good example. He's come in here and he's probably got different goals to what I have. But um, you can sort of tailor a program like this to different body shapes, whereas with gym work, it's, there's um, one set of standards and it's on how much weight you can lift. I was probably oversized in 16, so I went on the paleo diet for about six weeks and lost four or five kilos throughout that. And then throughout my 17s and 18s years, I was on calorie deficits and stuff like that, which I, I wouldn't really recommend to anyone playing footy now. I think that was just about detrimental to how my footy was going. Um, because you need a certain amount to function properly. And I think a lot of the time I couldn't get anything done, you know, going through year 12 and my 17s year um, and just eating nothing basically throughout the school day to try and drop weight. In fact, I probably put on weight because I was trying so, so hard to lose weight. But um, I think nutrition is now a much more focal point in football where 
Um, we're a lot more aware of what we need to put into our bodies and, and you can't get away with skimping on, on eating carbs, eating your protein and getting your macros. So I think most tack clubs now have a nutritionist or there's certainly someone within um, someone's personal arc that they can speak to about nutrition, which is certainly something that I didn't invest in enough. Um, I sort of went internet hopping and, and looked for the best quick fix to, to weight issues. So um, I think now it's controlled a lot better. As much as it, it sounds like I'm paraphrasing Joel Embiid, I think it's trust the process. There's a lot of funding that goes into AFL Vic and, and the wider AFL um, regions around the country, so you're in good hands. I think the most important things is trial different ways of training. I know for myself I certainly had to because I was um, fairly gym ready by the time I was 16, 17, so I probably didn't need to focus on it as much. I needed to focus on my running and, and my movement patterns and stuff like that, which is why you know, I sort of ended up here. But yeah, I think if you can experiment with as many different types of training and sort of have your finger in as many different pies as you can um, in that respect, just so that you're sort of covering off all bases and, and so that you don't have an excuse when you get to the end of one of your years and you're sort of not satisfied with it, I think the best thing you can do is throw yourself in the deep end, yeah. I think the one thing I didn't discover until my first couple of days at Carlton was um, how to put yourself in a hole early. If you can make things as uncomfortable as possible, um, it's never a bad thing. You know, there's a line between hurting yourself and, and doing what's best for yourself and I, I think I had those two concepts misconstrued for a while where I probably used the hurting myself as an excuse to say that I was injured or something like that when in fact I just wasn't as fit as everyone else and I wasn't pushing myself hard enough. So. It's probably the one piece of advice I'd give myself, I think. At a certain point in time, you know you've got the ability or you know you've got enough talent to, to go close, especially in 18s, because the feedback loops are so good there. Um, so that's less of a concern, I'd say. If I was going to tell myself anything, I'd just say, you know, hurt yourself early, do the hard work in pre-season because it all pays you back. The biggest thing I notice throughout 16s to 17s is um, if you want to be a footballer, you've got to live it. You can't rock up to training and think those two hours are going to set you aside you know, to do whatever you want for the rest of the week. I think um, the biggest thing is you've got to live the lifestyle early days. Um, I think Bailey Smith's probably the best example. He went to the Western Bulldogs and you know, he copped it all year for being sort of poor value. But um, once you make it to the system, it's all worth it. And um, I think the only excuse you could ever have for the hardest two hours where you can do whatever you want for sort of the rest of your week is when you're in an AFL program because they work you so hard but the reality is if you're an under 16, 17, 18 you're not working anywhere near as hard as what an AFL player is and that's why there's such a big difference between the standards but, but training you just want to be the best out there I think if you have the mindset that training is going to be harder than what a game is um, and that's Alistair Clarkson's philosophy um, if you can make training harder than a game then it means you go into a game situation, you're put under the pump, there's no level to drop to. You sort of stay above the standard or you stay at the standard that you guys are training at. Pure talent and, and the talent you were given to start with is less of a concern in AFL circles now because um, what's commonly seen is a lack of effort, a lack of um, ability to control your mindset. Um, and slowly but surely a lot of mental stuff is coming into the game. Um, stuff like mindfulness and being present in the moment I think is massive now because a lot of people are focusing on contracts, big money, um, endorsements, when the reality is if you're not a good footballer, you won't get any of it. I think for 2019, it's just learning as much as I can. Um, we've got an awesome group at the club where um, everyone's best mates with each other and, and we've got enough senior players that you can learn a lot off them. But um, for me, it'll be learning as much as I can, um, playing as many games as I can in the ones team. But um, I just want to finish the year knowing that I've thrown everything out my first year because, you know, as, as much as some people can be naive enough to think that they're going to be a superstar in their first year, I think it's always a learning year. It's always about adjusting to the new standards. So um, for me, it'll be more about, you know, sort of sponging up everything I can, getting as fit as I possibly can in the next month or two while we're still running, and then just proving to people that um, the faith Carlton showed in me, I guess, was, was worth it. But yeah, I think that's less of a note, I think. Um, it's more about just learning as much as I can in my first year. Yeah. Um, I think enjoy your footy. One of the big things I did in my 18s year, you know, um, a lot of people were asking me if I was disappointed with my year, but especially with the national championships that I missed. And to be honest, I had more fun playing with the Dragons than, than I'd had in my entire life. Um, I had respect there. 
um, which is another big thing in, in football circles. Um, and it's only hard work that earns it for you. I had a great group of mates, which is probably, I guess, another thing, yeah, make as many mates as you can at Sandy, because now I've got 40 to 50 mates who may not be playing AFL, but they sort of spread around the state. Um, and I know them quite well, so um, that's been superb for me. You know, being a year out of school, I could really drop myself into the program and, and buy in. But um, commonly at Sandy, you know, because you've got APS and non-APS footballers, there's so, sort of like a rift between them. And if you can close that down, one, you'll be a good team, but you'll enjoy your year more. And I think that's whether or not you make AFL, um, it's sort of what your under-18s year's about. Because after that, you go into the real world.